Hey guys, Nick Stoy with Stoy Wood Design. I want to thank you for tuning in to another episode. In this episode, I'm going to show you how I constructed this DIY entry hall tree built-in. I broke it into two parts. The first episode, I'm going to show you how I constructed the lower portion, with the second part, how I constructed the upper portion. So if you haven't done so already, please make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel to make sure you don't miss that video once it's released. As always, please let me know if you have any questions in the comments section below, and I hope you enjoy this video. So I started this project out by ripping down some extra three-quarter inch plywood I had on hand to three and three-quarter inches wide. Uh, this was going to act as the base of the entry built-in and would be covered by the face frame, so it really doesn't matter what material you use on the bottom. You could elect for two-by-fours, but I went ahead and went with the three-quarter inch plywood to ensure I could have a level base. With my base strips ripped down, I went ahead and took them over to my miter saw station and used my Craig stop block to cut them to their final length. Next, I pulled out the Craig Foreman and got it set up for 3 quarter inch material and started drilling my pocket holes. With the prep work complete, it was time for assembly. I went ahead and laid out all my strips on a flat piece of material just so I could ensure it was glued up as square as possible as I knew this would be the foundation for the entire built-in. With the frame complete, I headed back over to the saw stop and ripped down a piece of 3 quarter inch plywood that would act as the base of the entry built-in. For this project specifically, I decided to sand everything as I assembled it just because of all the nooks and crannies that were going to form on the top and bottom part of the built-in. With the lower platform complete, I moved on to using the rest of my 3 quarter inch plywood to construct the base of the entry hall tree. As you can see here, I had just enough for the vertical supports of the seat, and then I used my offcuts for the horizontal runners.
And with those pieces cut to their final dimension, it was back over to the Craig Foreman for some more pocket holes. And as you could probably tell, I was singing a little Drake there. This was also the first time I could use my Festool ETS-125 5-inch random orbital sander partnered with their entry-level HEPA vacuum. These are the first Festool products I've purchased, and I can't say enough about them. I know their price point may be high, but in terms of cutting down on the fine dust, I don't think you're going to find anything better. Before gluing and screwing on my vertical supports, you could see here that I decided to lay out where each panel was going to sit. This really helped during assembly and ensured I had everything spaced out correctly. With the layout and prep work complete, it was time to construct the lower portion of this built-in. With the frame secure, I flipped around the piece and used some 18 gauge brad nails to secure the vertical panels in place before countersinking some 2 inch drywall screws. I then headed back over to the motor saw station with the horizontal supports I had cut with my offcuts. As you can see here, my Craig stop block does not adjust close enough to my miter saw, so what I did is I used it as a reference to ensure I had a flat edge before tracing my one accurate measurement to all my pieces. A quick tip I wanted to share here for your horizontal supports, this is going to be the same for this entry built-in as well as really cabinets in general. You want to make sure to offset your pocket holes so that when you are screwing them into your material, the screws are not butting into one another. You actually see how I space this out when I go to assemble the lower built-in here in the next scene.
with the construction complete, it was time to move on to assembling the face frame. So as you can see here, that is the same miter saw station, but it, yes, it is in a new location. So my wife and I actually decided to sell our home during the midst of the coronavirus while I was taking on this project. And I was fortunate to have a good friend allow me to use his 40 by 50 pole barn to set up my workstation while we build our dream home on five acres. So I will be talking about this future build here more in upcoming videos, and I think I'm going to try to document it along with how I set up my shop for the future. So if you have any questions or you might be interested in that, please make sure to leave a comment below. Another quick tip as I attach the face frame, and that is to think about your pocket hole placement and when you need to make those. So I actually drilled my pocket holes to accept the face frame at the start of the project when I had the Craig Foreman out after I had broken down my sheets. And that really just helps to speed up the process during assembly. Now, if you forget, you can definitely go back with the handheld Craig jig to make those holes. But thinking about that placement in advance will really help to speed up the process. After sanding down the face frame, it was time to move on to paint. I recently purchased my first ever HVLP spray station from Erlex and I've been super happy with the results. And up to this point, I have to admit, I really don't enjoy painting, but the quality this brings to all my pieces has really been outstanding. In addition to that, it's cut down on overspray in the shop when I do have to spray indoors, and it seems like my paint's going a lot further as well. So if you've ever been interested in an HVLP sprayer, I would say definitely give it a shot. And with that, this concludes part one of our two-part series on how to construct the DIY entry built-in. If you haven't done so already, please make sure to like and subscribe, as well as ring that bell icon so you're notified when part two of this video comes out. In part two, we'll be assembling the upper part of this built-in, as well as providing some additional photos once it's in the customer's home. Again, my name is Nick Stoya with Stoya Wood Design, and thank you for watching.